Welcome to the Sermon Podcast of Treasure House, a branch of Christ Way Ministries International. We are a family of joyful believers on a mission to change the world with the gospel of Jesus through soul winning and soul building. We believe that these teachings will enrich your soul and strengthen your love for God. Be blessed as you listen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to believe that we can all hear me. Can we all hear me? Amen. All right, before we proceed into tonight's teaching, can we say a word of prayer? Father, we thank you because you're a faithful God. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for another time to gather to learn at your feet. We pray that as we go into your word this evening, there is light to our hearts, our soul, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Tonight I want to celebrate our pastor, Pastor Fikaya Ojo. Thank you for leading us well. I want to celebrate his wife, the assistant pastors, and the, the ministers. And also I celebrate you for joining us on the call tonight. All right, so the topic before us this evening is righteousness. And we are going to be taking our Bible text from Romans chapter 5. 17 to 21 amplified version romans 5 17 to 21 the amplified version for if because of one man's trespass lapse offense death reigned through that one much more surely with those who receive god's overflowing grace or merited favor and the free gift of righteousness putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Verse 18. Well then, as one man's trespass, one man's first step and falling away led to condemnation for all men, so one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Verse 19. For just as by one man's disobedience falling to yet heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners, so by one man's mm. obedience, the many the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. Verse 20. But then came in only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and exciting opposition. But we are seeing increase and unbounded grace has surpassed it and increased the more and super abounded. The last verse. So that just as sin has reigned in death, so grace is on end and undeserved favor might reign also through righteousness, right standing with God, which is used in eternal life through jesus christ the messiah the anointed one hallelujah all right our topic tonight is righteousness what is righteousness i would define righteousness as the ability to stand before god without guilt or condemnation it is the quality of being right in the eyes of god our character We read this evening. Glory to God. For, from the Bible text that we read this evening, we can see that we were made to understand that the sin of Adam separated our fellowship with God. Through him came sin and condemnation, and we couldn't stand before God in boldness anymore. So this fellowship was restored through Jesus Christ. It was when Christ came that the guilt of sin and condemnation was taken away. You know, Romans 5 verse 19, in the text that we just read, it made us understand that by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, and by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Glory to God. So it was through Jesus Christ that righteousness came into being. Adam came with sin and condemnation, but Jesus Christ came with his righteousness, and the righteousness came through cleansing of sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to believe that we are following me. Amen. All right. Um, righteousness is not obtained by living morally. It is not about, uh, okay, there is this law that don't steal, I do not steal. There is a law that don't tell lies, I do not tell lies. It is beyond that. 
it is beyond that righteousness is beyond that it is only obtained through christ righteousness can only be obtained through christ and once you have accepted the lordship of christ this gift is imputed into you amen righteousness is a spiritual reality of every believer it is a spiritual gift that god has made available to us through jesus christ when he sent his son to die for us on the cross of calvary he has taken away all this sin and through that by that we have been made righteous the righteousness has been imputed into us amen and therefore through this it has the the the, the his death on the cross of calvary for us it has made us blameless it has made us guiltless and justified glory to god so this righteousness is a gift to us we do not it is not something that you 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 know a, a, a gift just come to you it is not that you buy it it is not that um you 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 it is a gift that comes naturally to us but before you can access this gift you have, you must have accepted the lordship of jesus amen amen second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 it says for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him glory to god this passage affirms that christ is the only source of righteousness he bore all our sins he satisfied the righteous demands of the holy god and made us free from all condemnation so and by this we have the gift of righteousness we are clothed in righteousness glory to jesus so it is a spiritual reality that as a believer you must have amen glory to god so i want us to understand that this gift through this gift through this gift god has made available to us that god has made available to us through jesus christ we can walk blameless we can walk without guilt we are justified glory to god we are no longer condemned but if you want to enjoy this gift if you want to have access to this gift you must accept the lordship of jesus christ you must accept that he died for you on the cross you must accept that he has bought all these sins on your behalf glory to god hallelujah i want to encourage us this evening that as believers it is important to pursue righteousness daily god takes pleasure in those who pursue righteousness god takes pleasure in those who pursue righteousness as believers let me repeat it is important to pursue righteousness daily because god takes pleasure in those who pursue righteousness glory to god we can see in proverbs chapter 15 verse 9 it's affirmed that it says that the that he loves him who pursue righteousness that is moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and relation uprightness of mind rights rightness of principle exact conformity exact conformity to truth glory to god so it is important as believers it is important to pursue righteousness daily it is important to pursue righteousness daily glory to god glory to god as believers we live out this righteousness and not less of the grace that saved us the behavior and the character of every believer must be the standard of god's righteousness on the surface of the earth glory to god glory to god hallelujah like i said earlier righteousness can only come through the cleansing of sin by jesus christ i have already mentioned that it, it is beyond you living it is beyond moral it is beyond morals it is beyond you saying that there is this law i keep to this law glory to god we have people that they are disciplined they are they, they don't they are not manipulative they don't do things but it, if they don't if they have not accepted the lordship of christ they do not have access to this gift glory to jesus romans 10 chapter 3 
Romans chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. It says, um, New Living Translation, it says, For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Instead, they are clinging to their own way of getting right. They think that if I do this, then I am I'm living righteously. With God, by trying to keep the law, they won't go along with God's way. Christ, Christ has, a, verse 4 says, For Christ has accomplished the whole purpose of the law, and all who believe in him, all who believe in him, are made right with God. Before you can say that you are enjoying this gift, you must believe in God. You must believe in him. It says all who believe in him are made right with God. If you want to be made right with God, if you want to have access to these gifts of righteousness, you must believe in God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Our actions should always be in accordance with who we are in Christ. Once you have embraced this gift of righteousness, if you have if you have listened to um the CL 103, you know, Pastor took us through 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 this topic, gift of righteousness. And it made us to understand that once you have embraced the gift of righteousness, you move on and begin to live out that righteousness that has been impacted on you through Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Can you repeat after me that I am the righteousness of God? I am the righteousness of God. I have this spiritual gift. I have this spiritual gift. I am the righteousness of God. So once you have embraced the gift of righteousness, you move on and begin to live out that righteousness that has been impacted on you. Christ Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I want us to understand this evening that righteousness is is an instrument is an instrument that we need on earth to reign as Christian. Any Christian who is going to reign in life needs this gift of righteousness. Glory to God. Any Christian that is going to reign on earth, we need these gifts. We need these gifts of righteousness. We need these gifts of righteousness. Amen. Amen. So this this gift of righteousness is is one of the attributes that is expected to be seen in us. What the person is should be revealed by what he does. In every situation you find yourself, in any anywhere you find yourself, this gift must it must show in your life. If you claim that you have accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have access to this gift, then it must show in the way you live your life. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So as believers, you should be determined not to lose this gift. You should be determined, you should, you should determine, you should determine not to lose this gift. Amen. When situation pops up, when you find yourself in, in any situation, do not let go of this gift. Do not let go of God's standard. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage us this evening that once you are in right standing with God, you become consecrated. Once you are in right standing with God, you become concentrated. You become set apart for the use of God. But before you have access to this, you must be in right stand with God. So this gift is something that as believers, it, once you have accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ, once you know that, yes, I have accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have this gift already imputed in you, and you make it to show, you exhibit it. You exhibit it. Glory to Jesus glory to jesus i pray that the lord will help us in jesus name so in our character in our conduct in our actions in the way we talk in the way we relate this gift must be expressive it must show it must show in our attitude in our behavior in our words it must show 
Amen. Amen. Through this righteousness, we become acceptable to God. We are able to come to Him. We are able to come before Him in boldness. So if you are listening to me this, this evening and you have not given your life to Christ and you want to enjoy these gifts, you want to have access to these spiritual, these spiritual gifts, you need to accept Him as your Lord. You need to accept Him as your Savior. Glory to Jesus. And this gift will be imputed into you. It is a free gift. It is a free gift. It is a free gift that we have access to. And it, it only comes through Jesus. It only comes through Jesus. It only comes through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter... Please hold on. Philippians chapter 1 verse 11. It makes us it made us understand that this this gift comes through Jesus Christ. You cannot it is not it cannot come through your own works. It cannot come through your own understanding. It cannot come through your own decision to live right. You can only have access to this gift through Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus name. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus name. So be determined that this standard is God's standard and I want to live by it. I want to live by it. I want to live righteous. I want to stay righteous. I have this gift in me and therefore it is expressive. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, can we go to our discussion this night? I'll be calling on um, Minister Muiwa Egbewale. I want to believe that you are there. How can somebody be righteous? Romans chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. Romans 4, 3 to 5. Romans chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. Sister Sheung Oyebamiji, please you help us take First John chapter 1, verse 7 to 10. Minister Muiwa, can we have you, sir? Thank you very much. Thanks for your time so far. Um, Romans 4, verse 5 says, For what is the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that walketh not, but believed on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I think it's um, self-explanatory from the scripture that all it takes for us to receive this gift of righteousness is faith or believing. Like we saw in verse 3, he said, I believe God. And verse 5, he said, his faith was counted unto him for righteousness. Meaning, believing in Jesus, like you mentioned earlier, is what um, gets the righteousness of God, this gift of God imputed upon our heart. And this righteousness comes by faith in the sense that um, believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, believing in that ensures that the life of God comes into our hearts and righteousness, the righteousness of God, which is God's free gift, is also imputed into our heart that's what the bible says in romans 4 you know earlier verse he said blessed is the man to whom god will not impute sin all right in the sense that it is not by the work that we do like we saw in this verse 3 and 5 if we work for righteousness and god gives us righteousness that is not god giving us a free gift it's basically god paying us for the work we've done god owed us a debt of righteousness that we had just paid it however we didn't work for it there's nothing ever like you shared man there's nothing ever that we can ever do to merit God's righteousness, to merit God's highest standard of efficiency, all right? However, God in his kindness and love imputed it freely into our heart in salvation. So faith is what qualifies us for righteousness. So how can someone be righteous? By believing in Jesus and believing in the death and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. 
like i said you must believe in god you must have that faith you must believe thank you very much minister Muiwa. um sister shenwe ibamji first john 1 7 to 10. But you really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light. We have true and broken fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is from presence and removes us from all sin and guilt, and keeps us clean from all sins, nor his forms and manifestations. If we say we have no sin, we delude and lead ourselves astray, and the truth which the gospel presents is not in us. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confessed our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and we forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. If we say we have not we have not sinned, we contradict his word and make him out to be false and a liar, and his word is not in us. The divine message of the gospel is not in our hearts. And thank you. From this passage, what was the question again? I wanted I want to be sure. I said, how, how can somebody be righteous? Be righteous? Yes, I think how to be righteous. Just like we read here, number one, we have to first admit for those that are not saved that we are sinners and then confessing that and knowing and believing that we're sinners and confessing and um, accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and um, knowing ourselves that our own um, self-righteousness has nothing, is, is not in league with what God is giving us, that new garment of righteousness that is wearing on us after we have confessed our sins and He has forgiven us and cleansed us from our righteousness. Like He has taken away that garment of righteousness and that righteousness was given unto us as a gift. And we are now in conformity to God's will and His purpose. So um, to know that we are righteous, we have to believe that it is God that can only give us that gift of righteousness. We cannot do it by our own works, just like you said, and we cannot do it by our own... Um, um, uh, our own, um, uh, how do I put it now? Our own actions. It is God that gives us that gift, and it is the grace of God that helps us to work out that righteousness in us. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Ma. Glory to God. I believe one thing that they have both emphasized in answering this question is you must believe in God and also you must be cleansed from all sins and guilt. And like I said earlier, that the the way we can have access to these gifts is by um is by accepting and believing in god accepting his lordship glory to god and through this we are made free of any guilt of sin we are made free from guilt of sin and condemnation all right so our second question brother ore and also minister Mwewa, uh, um what practical ways can you wage war against unrighteousness? What practical ways can you wage war against unrighteousness? Brother, or a Romans 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Minister Mwewa, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. Chapter 12, verse 2 it says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. When you learn to know God's way for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And one of the practical ways we can, the question is one of the practical ways we can wage war against unrighteousness. Simply, you need to first accept the fact that you've been made right with God. And this is one of the understandings that you should accept the free gift. It's a gift that was given to us by the finished work of Christ. So accepting and embracing that also, allowing then now taking conscious, because firstly, there's need to, for you to understand that the fact that you became saved, that moment you became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So accepting, accepting that information allowing that information to sync with you also because let i'll read from romans chapter 8 verse 9 romans chapter 8 verse 9 just to portrait what i've said 
protected but you're not controlled by the sinful nature you are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit let me use kjv so that we can yes but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he is not his and if christ is in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of what righteousness then i'll just jump straight to verse 13 for if you live according to the flesh you die but if you live according if you live by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live so basically you are accepting the gifts that was given unto you is primarily important and the fact that understand that repentance means a change of heart it is a turn a change is a turn around in the change orientation the way you live so but the way you can live victorious due to this is by renewing your mind by the word of god also embracing the word the truth has been given to us the truth the gift of righteousness that has been given to us through the finished work of christ so th- that's that will give that will help us in a long way all right thank you very much sir minister Amu, you are titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 12. good um thank you ma once again um the question says what practical ways can you wage war against unrighteousness? Um, Titus 2, 11, 12 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, well, we can find here from that verse 11 and 12, especially the intro of verse 12, it says, teaching us. That shows that the grace of God is a teacher. The grace of God can teach. And really, who teaches us is who rules us. Whoever teaches us is the person that rules us, all right? Or he rules, he who teaches. That, that's, that's a principle we find consistent throughout the scriptures. We see the Pharisees, you know, teaching, um, you know, the, the, the Israelites, right? We see Jesus Christ teaching the disciples. You know, it shows an exchange of knowledge or indoctrination of some sort going on. So exposing ourselves, like Minister Brock already just said, to that knowledge or that information, that the grace of god has appeared unto me or the righteousness of god has been imputed into my heart that knowledge teaches me and it rules me so like we have in romans 7 it talks about it ruling our members right so for example our actions inactions the way we talk the way we talk um our actions in society interactions with fellow saints the things we do in secret even you know it helps to rule our desires, to mortify the flesh. Like we have in Galatians chapter 5. He said, the sin that you have crucified the old man, you've crucified the flesh with his lustful desires. You've crucified it. So that knowledge, that consistent badging your mind with the knowledge, all right, of the grace of God or the righteousness of God, it teaches us something to deny ungodliness. Naturally, that means we would find ungodliness and worldly lusts, all right? We find them repulsive naturally because we are being taught something different, a higher knowledge, which is the grace of God. So the grace of God teaches us, and naturally, that teaching or that knowledge helps us to find unrighteousness repulsive. So how we wage war against unrighteousness primarily is to bombard our minds, our heart, our consciousness, with the knowledge of the righteousness of god with the knowledge of the grace of god because that way once we think right we will live right praise god thank you ma all right thank you very much um brother orion minister i pray that the lord will help us in jesus name so we should make decision to stay godly and also you must constantly renew your mind glory to god what you listen to, what comes into your thoughts, what you allow to cross your mind, you should always put it in check. Amen. Amen. So our third discussion 
I'll call Sister Sheung and Brother Oyewale Blessing. Sister Sheung, I'll pause with Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. The, the question is, what is the fruit of righteousness? What is the fruit of righteousness? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, Sister Sheung. Then Brother Blessing, Isaiah chapter 32, 16 to 17. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Sister Shio, okay. Isaiah 22, 16 to 17. Okay, the fruits of righteousness. Proverbs 12, 22. Lying lips are extremely disgusting and hateful to the Lord. But they who deal faithfully are his delight. So, um, faithfulness. The fruit of righteousness. One of them is faithfulness. As in being faithful in what has been committed to you, um, being a person of integrity, taking full responsibility when anything is committed into your hands. All right, thank you very much, ma'am. Brother, blessing, Isaiah 32, 16 to 17. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for the teaching, for opening, into, opening our minds and our hearts into the subject of righteousness. Yes, I'm going to read from here. Jesus, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16 says, Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness will remain in the fruitful field. Verse 17, The work of righteousness will be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So the question says, what is the fruit of righteousness? From here now we can see that this is the work of righteousness will be peace. So that's that, that that gives us a picture of what righteousness brings us peace. I think Romans chapter five verse one says that having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So that's one of the first things righteousness actually gives us. It brings us into harmony with God, with our Creator. That means from there, from that beginning, from that point our lives begins to have meanings. So because when you are at the peace with your creator, you can now start to live life in the way that he ordained it. So that's the one of the first things that we have. We have peace with God. We have harmony with God. And beyond that, you know, him being the almighty, that means we can rest in him. We can rest in his power. You know, as we live life, as we go through life, we can trust in God. We can trust in him. We can depend on him to lead us through life, to guide us through life. And that gives us, which I also like the next verse is, the next part says is assurance. You know, when we have peace with God, there's confidence, there's assurance, you know. That's when he's, you know, just like Jesus Christ is described it, having your house planted on the rock. When the winds come, when the storms come, when the rains come, there is there is confidence that, oh, bring it on, bring it on. You know, there is, you have a backer, you have a defender because of this relationship that you have with God. So peace in, in, in terms of security, you know, eternal security, also peace, even as we live through life, you know, as we live through life, whatever may come our way, we have confidence, we have assurance, you know, that's, that's where our boldness comes from. That also reminds me of uh, Proverbs 28, verse 1, that says, the righteous is as bold as a lion, you know, this is where all this boldness comes from, it's because of, there's a, there's a connection, there's an harmony, there's a, there's a, there's a harmony with God, and that gives us, you know, peace that gives us assurance and also gives us boldness it is this connection and that's what righteousness gives us thank you all right thank you very much sir proverbs 12 um 28 it says in the way of righteousness is life and in the pathway thereof there is no death i think another fruit of righteousness is that you are going to enjoy eternal life glory to god all right just a recap of what we have learned this evening from our discussion how can somebody be righteous you must believe in god you must accept the lordship of jesus and by that you have gift you have this gift imputed into you and also ways you can wage war against unrighteousness you make a decision to stay godly and you constantly renew your mind and also fruit of righteousness we say eternal life faithfulness peace and fruitfulness in conclusion 
um, by Christ and his righteousness, we have more and greater privileges than we lost by the offense of Adam. Therefore, let's effectively live in righteousness. I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to help us and guide us in Jesus' name. We trust you had a good time with God's word. To enjoy more of this, follow us on our Twitter and Instagram handles at underscore treasure church and on YouTube at Treasure House Christway Church. God bless you.